Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Storky Farmstead. So a lot of people are starting raised beds because we're in February and we're really close to planting season. So let's talk about raised beds. What I've got here is a raised bed. You notice it is only a foot off the ground. Okay, so a lot of people ask me, did you put any kind of weed barrier in here? Any kind of plastic or anything to block the weeds from coming up? The simple answer is no, I did not. I layered this with cardboard and with newspaper. Two reasons. One, they're biodegradable and they will feed the soil and the earthworms in the soil. And two, because I need my plant roots to be able to get to the soil. The thing about growing in a raised bed, you have to have plants in soil. Soil is a living organism, very similar to your skin. You cannot plant in compost, worm castings, or anything else and get good healthy yields. Your plant roots must be in soil. So what you do, if you look right here, this is the soil, okay? And you can notice what we've been doing here at Starkey Farmstead is filling this bed in with rabbit manure, hay, leaves, rabbit urine. Anything that I can get that will break down and create organic matter on top of the soil. One, because I'm planting on top of clay. Hard packed Louisiana red clay. Now clay is the greatest soil in the world, but you must keep it covered and you need to get an organic matter built up on top. So when I'm ready to plant, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take my little handheld shovel and I'm gonna make a hole in the soil. Okay, I'll take my little plant, and yes, this basil plant is dead, but it's a good example of how I'll do it. I'll stick it into the ground, making sure the roots are in the ground. Then I will bring back all of the mulch and stuff around it. If you cover this bed with enough hay, leaves, grass clippings from inside of your, when you cut your grass, <clears throat> if you will cover this with enough of that, you will suppress the weeds like that. Over time, your cardboard, your newspaper, your leaves, your hay, your cut grass, all of that's gonna break down and add nutrition back to your soil. You don't wanna block the ability for earthworms and microorganisms to move back and forth between what's on top of your soil and what is in your soil. So you've gotta get these beds filled with something. So the best thing that you can do is get a hold to a local farmer, find rabbit manure guys. It's a cold manure, but your NPK is higher in rabbit manure than any other form of manure, period. Do your research. You want a rabbit manure, and if you can't get a hold to that, goat manure is great. You can't get a hold to that, go with an aged manure because every other type is going to be hot. So it's gonna have to be composted for a couple of months. So once you do that, you're gonna get a good compost into this soil on top of it. Then you can fill it in with some worm castings, some leaves, all of that stuff. Now I get a lot of questions from people. What do worm castings do for your soil? It's like this, for the ones of you who bake, think about when you wanna make something like say, you want a starter yeast to start your own bread. Well, the older that that yeast starter is, the better the sourdough bread is. So that is the same concept with worm castings. Worm castings are made from plant material for plants. The worms ingest it and what they poop out are nothing but living microbes. But here's the kicker. If you get your worm castings from Walmart or anywhere else, they have sterilized it for your safety so there's no living organisms left. It's good organic matter, but you're gonna be missing the fungi, the bacteria, and all of the things that you need to bring your dirt back to life. So get with a local farmer, get your manure, your compost, and your worm castings as local to you as you can. I hope that this helps. Obviously, this bed is not near full enough with materials yet. And over the next month, I will continue to layer this bed with rabbit, it's very long, as you can see, and it's a foot tall. So it's gonna take a lot of material to fill this bed in. But like I said, the biggest thing 
is that I plant my roots directly in the soil. So I could have built a four foot bed, but in that case, you're gonna have to bring in topsoil, guys. And on top of that topsoil, you're gonna need to put your compost, your worm castings, your rabbit manure, and your mulch. Good luck to all of you. Thank you for rowing in our boat. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you're doing to fill your raised beds this year.